ANOVA protects you from committing a type 1 error in the event of a statistically significant MANOVA F, uh, F value, then choose LSD. It's the most powerful way of finding statistically significant effects uh, once you get a significant MANOVA and ANOVAs. Uh, so I'm choosing LSD. Some people might choose two keys and other options. I don't want to do a full post hoc uh, analysis or examination of the various post hoc methods. I'm going to use the simplest. It's basically t-tests across the uh, comparisons for two means. Now I'll click on continue and I'm going to click OK. So here's the output that SPSS gives me for the general linear model approach to doing a MANOVA. I get my first table with sample size, 209 for undergrads, uh, masters 211, and 199 PhD. So roughly similar sample sizes. Then we get the means and standard deviations. And we can see for verbal 1, the first verbal subscale, the undergrads had the lowest mean, 8.64. Masters had the next highest mean, 9.86. And then PhDs had the highest mean on this verbal subscale, 11.53. We can see the standard deviations are ballparkish in the same, same area. So this suggests to me that there's homogeneity of variance. And if we can, we can look at all the individual means across all nine subtests. And we can see that the trend is such that PhDs tend to be smarter than masters and masters smarter than undergrads. And that's true across all, in, all, um, all dependent variables. Now the next box that or the next table that SPSS outputs is boxes test of equality of covariance matrices. Now, in the context of doing a MANOVA, you do not want this to be statistically significant because it's an assumption in MANOVA that the covariance matrices amongst your dependent variables are going to be the same across all three of your groups. In this case, I've got three. So however many groups you happen to have. So if they are not the same, then this significance value will be less than 0.05 and then you're rejecting the null hypothesis which means that you have not satisfied the assumption of equality of covariance matrices. Now Box's test of equality of covariance matrices has been very severely uh, criticized and I would say in the best case scenario you should use a significance level of 0.005 not 0.05 but 0 0.005, and I'll give you a reference for that in the summary of, um, of this video. Uh, you, I'll put some links so that you can get a uh, reference for that. You should use 0 0.005. So because the significance level here is greater than 0 0.05, uh, the assumption is satisfied. But if it were lesser than 0 0.005, then I would be rejecting the null hypothesis of equality of covariance matrices. Now, this test is very sensitive to normal distributions, uh, and it's sensitive to sample size. Uh, in my opinion, I wouldn't even use it probably at all. Uh, another way to get a feel for whether you've got equality of covariance matrices is to split, is to actually estimate the covariances amongst your dependent variables and split it across your, your three groups. So I want to compare my groups education level, cross education level. So I'm splitting the file and then I'm going to go into analyze and scale and reliability analyses. That's where covariance matrices are found. It's kind of hidden away in there. Statistics and covariances. And this is going to give me the covariance matrices between my nine dependent variables across all three groups. So you can see the covariance between verbal test 1 and verbal test 2 is 3.797 for the undergraduate group, and it's 5.834 for the master's group, and it's 5.037 for the PhD group. All right? The covariance between verbal test 1 and verbal test 2 is roughly the same across all groups. And if you look at all the O covariances, in the uh, covariance matrices here, they're all roughly approximately the same. Uh, and Boxes M is trying to test this in a in a one unit, like by giving us a one uh, one number, but it's too sensitive to sample size and normal distributions. And um, I think another way is to actually look at the covariance matrix. I I'm going to look for a number that you can say, as long as no covariance, as long as no corresponding covariance value is greater than three times each other, so as long as they're within three times each other's values, uh, the MANOVA is probably going to be pretty, ro uh, 
is going to be pretty robust. In fact, that's the next table that we 